This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. For one last time, it is time to talk college basketball for this year. We have got the men's national championship game tonight, San Diego State versus UConn. We are here to break it all down from every angle, getting Dr. Ed Fang's read on this game, letting you know where his numbers are seeing value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here as many Mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and find him on Twitter at thepowerrank at Ed. UConn is here. Seven and a half point favorite against San Diego State. I think the Final Four has outperformed expectations based on the doom and gloom from Twitter. So I'm excited. How are you doing today? Good. I, I didn't. I don't know. I, I Maybe I ignored all the doom and gloom on Twitter. I think Good this for you. a great Final Four. That's how you should live your life, Ed. Keep, keep it that way. Never change. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we don't have the blue blood programs, but no one cares about that anyway. And the first semifinal was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was even an additionally amazing experience for me because I did uh, I did have uh, FAU spread. I think I got okay. plus two and a half. Um, I had I had some thoughts from Alan Boston in my newsletter. Definitely decided to bet that day of. And when Lamont Butler put up that shot. As it was in the air, I was like, oh, I don't care what happens with this shot. <laughs> it's a winner either way. Win, right. right? There's no chance of it going into overtime at that point. Right. So shot goes or doesn't go, like, doesn't matter. So that was kind of fun. And then it was, like, insane and everyone was going kind of crazy. And it's a good experience for my kids right. to see and stuff like that. So that was all good as well. We had talked about that spread aspect, too, in the Gonzaga Sweet 16 game, where even if they don't hit that shot at the end, you were still covering. So it is right. kind of nice to have that wiggle room of, I don't really care what happens here. I can just be a sports fan and enjoy and let this bet uh, play out regardless. But I think the reason people were being you know, negative on Twitter about this like Final Four was no blue blood programs, ratings will be low. But like, why do you care if ratings are low? Why do you yeah, care? Who cares? Who, who cares? You get to watch basketball. Who cares what the ratings are? We can sit right. back, enjoy these games. And I mean, the UConn game wasn't competitive, but like, hey, you had UConn minus five and a half. So that's not going to bother you either. Yeah, didn't really sweat that much. I actually had UConn minus nine because mm -hmm. Betsco picked out a pretty good number. I forget where. I think it was DK. Yeah. So had a little sweat there. Um, had Alex Caravan over points, too which didn't go until his very last shot. Yeah. So he got to eight points and I had over seven and a half, but of course a lot of people probably got eight and a half and then he missed the foul shot after that. So that kind of sucked too. But uh, I guess, the, I guess the point is like player props are fun, right? If, if the game is not competitive tonight, uh, there, there's still a lot of ways to, uh, to, to get some, get some sweat later in the game with some player props and, and we can get into that later. There certainly are. We will discuss some that Ed likes uh, for this game. Talk about the spread. Talk about the total and get his read on this game overall. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast, because this fantastic week in sports does not end tonight. The Masters coming up this week. So tomorrow, Brandon Gandula going to swing by and break down all things Masters at Augusta. We'll have a full show on that tomorrow on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. These also do go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page, so make sure to subscribe there. Subscribe to Covering the Spread, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Whether your bracket is busted, still alive, or you're just looking for another way to get involved in March Madness, FanDuel has you covered. That's why FanDuel and Xfinity Mobile are partnering to give you a chance uh, to win a share of $10,000 for the national championship game. All you have to do is answer prop pick'em questions around in-game action inclusive of Xfinity Mobile themed questions. And the best part is it is free to play. Fans that answer the most questions correctly win a share of the $10,000 grand prize. The contest locks tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. So head to FanDuel now to get in on the action. To enter, go to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash Xfinity Mobile pick and roll. No purchase necessary. Age and location restrictions apply. Void or prohibited. See full terms at FanDuel.com. 
Xfinity Mobile has not sponsored or offered this promotion in any way. Now, before we dive into the national championship games tonight, Ed, I did want to take a look back at the tournament as a whole. We talked a lot about parity throughout this year. Um, I think that could be one takeaway. But when you look at the, the 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 overall dance, what were your biggest takeaways that you want to carry into future seasons? I mean, I, th I think the parity thing really kind of stands out. I mean, I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the the transfer portal as the reason for this. A lot of programs like FAU can kind of fill in some spots on the roster, get some depth uh, through that transfer portal. It's it's kind of evening the play in field. It makes sense to me. I haven't really done much thought beyond that, but but it certainly does make sense to me. And if that's really the case, like that's not really going to end. And I think in the future that kind of means you got to watch more games because yeah you know i mean the, the numbers are just are just going to be more they're, they're not going to make a definitive uh, assessment of these teams there's you know you know there's not going to be as many teams at the top there's not going to be the dominant teams so um you know you got to watch some teams and you know i'll talk about kind of what i've seen from from the two teams in the final tonight but um yeah i mean i think uh heading into the future it's it's going to be more important to watch games. Is that going to change your approach to filling out a bracket, knowing that there we saw more uncertainty this year, but also I think right. it's reasonable to expect that going forward. Yeah, for sure. Uh, filling out bracket, you know, this year I feel pretty fortunate that I was high on UConn before the yeah. start of the tournament because all the other favorites that I like that had better win probabilities, you know, didn't do as well. Um, and, and part of that certainly was, was watching the games. Yeah, uh, I think in the future, you're kind of going to be hoping for teams that you like to win the tournament, like a UConn to yeah. lose the semifinal of their conference tournament yeah. to a team probably overrated. So that's going to help that. That's true every year. I'm, I'm always rooting for <laughs> I'm always rooting for those top teams to lose in their conference tournaments just for the public perception or the potential public perception of that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, it, it, it's, it's going to get trickier. Yeah. So we had a fun tournament this year, a lot of parody, and it sounds like we're probably going to get that fun going forward, too, which I am all in favor for, because I know, again, the Blue Bloods aren't here, but this has been a fun tournament to watch. And I think that I want that in the future. Let's dig in now to tonight's game. We got San Diego State taking on UConn. UConn, a seven and a half point favorite at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's minus 120 on the plus seven and a half on the San Diego State side. The total in this game is 132.5. Now we'll dig into the specific markets in a second, Ed. But first, did you learn anything about these two teams in Saturday's games that you want to apply to tonight? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm hesitant about how strongly I want to say this, but I do not think San Diego State is a good basketball team. I, 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 I struggled to see how, I mean, look, they've, they've had some good fortune in getting this far and you didn't have to watch more than that semifinal to figure out coming back from, I mean, how many points were they down in the second half? I don't even remember off the top of my head, but <clears throat> look, this is a good defensive team and, and we'll, we'll talk about that more. That actually wasn't the case on uh saturday night they actually really struggled on defense and the florida atlantic team was able to put up a lot of points <coughs> but for the season for the history of the program this is a pretty good defensive team but they are just so limited on offense my sense kind of coming into the final four was that they had just uh made a bunch of contested jump shots that kind of got them to this point that was absolutely the case in the final i thought there was uh they they just kind of i mean they made half of their threes and still needed a, a shot at the end of the game to win it. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't know how long they can continue to do this. Um, I, you know, it's it's just kind of not a sustainable way to continue to beat really good teams. Yeah. And they've had their good share of luck uh, so far. Um, obviously, uh, Sweet 16 and Elite 8, uh, both those teams shot 11% from three, which is partially the defense, but partially some good fortune in there as well. So I, I just I'm not at all impressed with this team. Um, Connecticut, on the other hand, I've I've been uh, high on since before the tournament and uh, expected them to dominate on Saturday night. I think they pretty much did, and uh, yeah, I see them. Um, I, I see them winning this game. So you bet UConn in the Final Four. You were high on them coming in. 
The yeah. spread here is seven and a half. It's minus 102 on the seven and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook, at least. Do you think that is a fair number you're willing to lay with UConn here in the national championship? Yeah, I do think it's a fair number. I mean, my number is at 7.7, so it's basically fair. Um, I grabbed minus six as soon as it came out on Saturday night, so I was pretty happy with that. That was almost instantly gone and moved to – actually, I think, it, I think it actually moved to 7.5 by Sunday morning or maybe even late Saturday night. So uh, I'm not uh, – I, I think that's a pretty fair number. Um, I was looking at Betscope this morning, which is a, a very good tool for, for looking at different markets. Uh, FanDuel does have the best money line price at minus 335 right now uh, out of any of the books that they track. So if you have as much confidence in UConn in this game as me, if you know something about uh, – if you can look into the randomness of three-point shooting and, and no San Diego State's not going to hit half of their threes again, minus 335 is, is the best price you're going to get. And if you want to lay that kind of money uh, – there probably really is value there. Yeah. And uh, we've talked a couple of times about your different models, how you have an aggressive model and then a different model that's like less aggressive on teams. And you said going into the final four that your aggressive model had UConn pretty heavily favored for that game. They did cover right. easily in that one. Is it right. your more, more aggressive model that has a seven and a half or 7.4 yep. here? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to tell you about my other models that use the season long <laughs> that haven't been as accurate late in the season. Um, I do feel the more aggressive model has been spot on yeah. with this Connecticut team, and I'm not. I'm not going back on that now. I'm, I mean, I don't. I don't think this is going to get beyond seven and a half. It certainly doesn't right. look like that from the market, right. but I think you can make the case that it should be more than seven and a half. Right. I, I do think they're significantly the better team. Okay, so Ed has this is 7.4 right now. And again, it's 7.5 at FanDuel, but minus 102 there implies we could see maybe it gets back to seven at potentially at some point, but we'll monitor that. And as Ed mentioned, the money line price there pretty favorable at minus 335 on UConn. Total in this game is 132 and a half. He mentioned you're skeptical of San Diego State's offense with regards to how much they can do there. Any read for you on the total with that in mind? Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I mean, I do think San Diego State's going to bounce back to being the excellent defensive team they've been all season, over the years with Brian Dutcher. Um, but they they were pretty bad Saturday night. So um, the market seems to think that's a fluke as well. This is a pretty low total. It gets harder against UConn because UConn is a more athletic team than and, and more explosive team than Florida Atlantic. Uh, Jordan Hawkins potentially wasn't 100% on Saturday night, didn't practice on Friday, but he looked fine to me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't bet the total. I'd probably lean on the over um, just because this is pretty low, but uh, no bets for me. Uh, both sides there, uh, minus 110 on the over and the under at minus one thir- at, uh, 132 and a half over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, you mentioned some player props. You're betting them for other games, and we have player props for everybody, basically, everybody, in this game. Yeah. So when you look at those, Ed, where are you seeing value right now? Yeah, so my approach, my, my preferred per- approach for player props is is to kind of have a take for what I think is going to happen in the game mm-hmm. and then go over to BetScope and try to find the best low the lowest hold markets of, across multiple sports book and and i would definitely recommend trying that um the bet scope was actually uh didn't wasn't showing a lot of value on stuff for the semifinal games uh and that's partially because there were only player props on the starters at least the last time i looked which was which was saturday morning and then it kind of lit up like a christmas tree last night <laughs> For this final game, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And the reason why is because you can actually bet on a lot of the bench players. So so my take is that San Diego State is going to get back to the way they normally play defense. Uh, they are a very good defensive team. We've seen that in the tournament that has sustained them for every game except for this past one. And I expect them to get back to that. I think that means more uh, misses. And I think that means more rebounds. Um, so, you know, a couple of markets that have been identified um is, is uh with some with some good low hold across different sports books is is Donovan Klingon. Uh so he, this guy comes off the bench. He's 7'2, he's mobile. If he doesn't go to the NBA, and I don't know if he will or not, probably not because I don't see him on draft boards, but but this kid is really good. He will be if he's in college basketball next year at UConn, he will be one of the best players in all of college basketball. He's 7'2, he's mobile. Um 
I think there's going to be a lot of rebounds in this. Get this guy gets an absurd amount of rebounds per per unit per per uh, per minute played, and I think he's I think he's really talented. I think there's going to be a lot of missed shots on both sides, uh, both sides of the glass. Um, you can actually grab over four and a half rebounds uh, over at Caesars. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think that would probably be your best bet right now. Uh, it looked like there was plus 104 this morning. Um, so what? Wow. He's plus 116 over five and a half at FanDuel. If you can get over four and a half at plus money, that seems yeah. pretty baller. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I mean, I definitely, when I look at some of this stuff, I definitely think FanDuel has been pretty sharp on some of these props. Um, yeah. If they're off of the other books, it's usually the direction that I think it should be. At least right. It certainly has been. Uh, one example was Alex Caravan points uh, against Gonzaga. So he's he's the other wing. He, he's a wing for UConn. He's been starting all year. He's a 6'8 freshman and doesn't really look like he can do much. Has a kind of funky looking shot, but like is incredibly efficient on offense. And... Also, him and Klingon, I, I, you know, even if the top three players on this team leave, uh, which would be Sonogo, Hawkins, and, and Jackson, I still think this is at least the top five team next year because of Donovan Klingon and uh, Alex Caravan. Anyway, before the Gonzaga game, uh, FanDuel, like a lot of places had Caravan seven and a half points and, and yeah. FanDuel had it at eight. And every place moved up a point before tip. So FanDuel was certainly leading the right way there. Um so yeah, anyway, for the game, I think Klingon over rebounds is 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 a good thing. And uh I would go with that. I can confirm that that you can still get that number. I got plus 120 over four and a half. Um, so I took that. Um uh, I don't know oh, how wow. that's available when you have plus, plus 116 over five and a half. Yeah, so I took that. <laughs> there you go. There you no go. No complaints here. Anything else you want to highlight in this game Ed, before we close up shop? Um I don't know. I mean, I think. I don't. I, I think UConn's gonna kind of run away with this. If not, yeah. then maybe we get a close game and we can get a um, a close ending uh, before the start of the tournament. I did a study about upsets and, and what happens in upsets and it's in, in the tournament. And it's really not like what you typically think of. You know, the 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 underdog takes more threes, whatnot. Uh, the signature over all college basketball games is that teams that are a dog of six or more points. They, they tend to shoot 5% better from three than their season-long average, and they tend to hold their opponents to 5% less uh, from three. So that's what San Diego State has to do. They have to get back to like playing their best defense, really holding UConn down, which is certainly possible. And they have to shoot like they did against Florida Atlantic, which is certainly possible. Um, do I see it happening? No. There's a huge random element in three-point shooting. I think UConn wins this, and possibly by a pretty large margin. Yeah. Okay. So I'm rooting for Klingon now over four and a half. That's what I need for there tonight. And we'll see how things play out with UConn and San Diego state. Now we're going to let Ed go for today because I have to do covering the past later on. But Ed, first of all, I just want to say thank you for talking to us throughout this entire tournament, breaking down your thoughts, uh, spreading uh, what your numbers saying over at the power rank. Uh, we're going to have you on to talk some NFL draft in the not, uh, not too distant future. I'm excited for that. I know that the draft is a fun time for you. You've been dabbling in betting the draft the past couple of years now. It seems like it's gone pretty well overall. So I'm looking forward to those, but until then, where can people find your work? What, what is going on for you at the power rank? Yeah, absolutely. Check out my work at the power rank.com in my free newsletter. I curate a, uh, tips and bets from from the sharpest minds in the business every saturday that's five nuggets saturday so uh i think a lot of people have gotten a lot of value out of that so you can sign up for that at thepowerrank.com okay and check out ed on twitter as well at the power rank and ed i appreciate it and i'm looking forward to talking nfl draft with you uh soon ha and fun uh, have fun tonight good luck with your bets thanks yeah i'm looking forward to talking draft as well and uh good luck with everything tonight jim Alrighty, check out Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank, and uh, again, we'll have him back on pretty soon to talk about the NFL draft and get his thoughts on that once again. Before we close up for today, though, got to go back through what happened here last week on the show and recap recommended bets across covering the spread. We had Ed on to preview the men's final four. The big bet recommendation for Ed, as we alluded to, was UConn minus five and a half. They won by thirteen to cover that spread pretty easily. So. 
Not a lot of sweat involved with that one. Uh, so UConn came up big for Ed there, and hopefully they came up big uh, for him once again for tonight. On the women's side, we had Justin Carter on to preview the women's Final Four. Find him on Twitter at Just Carts. Find his work at Her Hoop Stats and Roto Baller as well. Justin said he liked LSU minus one and a half from the first game in the Final Four against Virginia Tech, and LSU was down in the third quarter but came back. Uh, they played very well in the down the stretch there, and they won by seven to cover, and obviously won last night as well. Justin had uh, South Carolina minus 11 and a half against Iowa. That one did not pan out as Iowa actually won that game outright. Um, played really well there, obviously, and, and Justin mentioned that possibility we were talking about the championship future. So he said he liked Iowa plus a 50 to win the national championship. And his thought process was there's some volatility with the three point shooting in Iowa, which could be a good thing. So they could win that game outright. And if they did, he thought they'd be favored against either LSU or Virginia tech. And they were, they were the favorites for last night. So would have given you the chance to hedge uh, as they were the favorites against LSU could have gotten the LSU money line at plus money. But no dice. Uh, congrats to LSU on the win. Congrats on a, a fun tournament as well. Uh, just a fun overall tournament. That game last night was fun despite the ref stuff. So uh, a good time for sure for some wins basketball. Check out Justin's work again on Twitter at Just Carts. On the racing side for me, things went pretty well uh, in the markets where I laid a lot of juice. And I talk about this when we're talking about other stuff, talking about props. Value is value. I don't mind um, betting on long shots. They're a good value. I don't mind you know, laying big money if it's a if it's a value bet. And that was kind of how things played out in both NASCAR and Formula One. Starting in Formula One in Australia, chaotic race. Um, more chaotic than usual, which made me very nervous because I had Lance Stroll. I had value on him to finish top 10, finish top six in the podium. The podium was five to one. Uh, the top six is minus 195. The top 10 was minus 300. And the goal was to ladder those where... If Stroll finished inside the top six, you'd profit. And then you add a bit more on the podium, so you have upside in case he does finish inside the top three. The, the hope with Stroll podium was, you know, one of the Red Bulls drops out, maybe Fernando Alonso drops out, stuff like that. He finished fourth, Stroll did, so it looks like it was close. Uh, it, it wasn't. Um, he ran sixth most of the day. He only finished fourth because uh, Carlos Sainz got a time penalty. There was some other stuff that happened super late in that race. He was actually off the track when they decided to like red flag it and revert back to the starting order for the final restart. So I don't think he deserved to finish fourth, but I'll take it. So it may seem like he was close to the podium. He was not. Um, that was pretty fluky. But again, the, the T6 at minus 195 and the T10 at minus 300 both cash. So hopefully you layer those properly to get a profit off of winning those two. And, you know, no dice in the podium, but it's 16.7% for a reason. Similar thing in NASCAR with the cup race on Sunday. I talked about how the bets I was seeing that that showed the best value were on a lot of top studs to finish top 10 at big money. Those were Larson minus or Kyle Larson minus 250, uh, Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin at minus 230, Joey Logano at minus 140. Three of those four hit, which is kind of what you needed if you were um, using Kelly criterion to layer these things out. You needed two of those or three of those four to finish top 10 to make it work. Larson won the race. So, uh, he cashed a minus 250. Harvick finished top five. He was minus 230. Logano finished seventh at minus 140. The one who did not was Denny Hamlin. He had two pit road speeding penalties, which is not ideal. Um, he is, I, guessing the career leader in pit road speeding penalties in NASCAR history. It happens a lot. Uh, so he did not cash minus 230, but Logano did at minus 140, Harvick minus 230, Larson minus 250. I never wound up seeing a lot of value in outrights. I did bet Hamlin live uh, nine to one when he showed a lot of speed in the second stage, but um, you know, it was a fine week uh, based on the top 10. So again, value is value. I'm okay laying big money if I think that they're undervalued. And that was the case for both Formula One and NASCAR this week. On the uh, non-Cup Series side in NASCAR, in Xfinity, I had Cole Custer at 10 to 1 to win. And uh, Brandon Jones, top five at plus 275. Jones is really good. I uh, got wrecked though late in that race. So didn't finish top five. Custer did. I had him at plus 125. Didn't talk about that in the show, though. So doesn't count. So no wins there. Uh, in the truck series, Zane Smith was trying to pass uh, Nick Sanchez on the final lap. Got to his outside. Sanchez got roughed up, and Zane almost got by him. 
He was plus 320 to win, and I thought he was going to get passed, but couldn't quite get there. So he got wrecked, which means uh, he did not finish the race. So uh, Carson Hosevar won. He didn't lead any laps outside the last lap. Nick Sanchez dominated that race. So had Zane at plus 320, did not cast there, but came close again. So a couple spots where I, you know, maybe got a bit unlucky with the Jones top five and the Zane win, but not sure if I deserve to win the Zane one anyway, but either way, fun weekend in racing and uh, looking forward to Bristol dirt this weekend. We'll try to find time probably on Thursday show to talk about some NASCAR later on this week. Big one coming up tomorrow though, is the masters. We'll have Brandon Gadula back on to break down his thoughts on Augusta and his favorite bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook to get that as it goes live. Make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and again, uh, subscribe there. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. Big thank you once again to Dr. Ed Feng for swinging by, breaking down down UConn versus San Diego State. Find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Enjoy the national championship game for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the Masters. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 